Here we go. Everything you need to learn about Revit in five minutes. Let's start the timer now. Please don't. The first thing that we're going to do is how do you open up a Revit file? This may sound simple, but there's a lot of ways to do it incorrectly. What you don't want to do is go through your file system here and open up a Revit project within the uh, file system. So first you need to make sure to open up Revit first. So we're gonna come in here and open up Revit. The reason why you need to open up Revit first or why that's the recommended way to do it is that there's going to be certain dialogue options that come up when you uh, open it up from within Revit. Specifically, when you open up a shared file, it's going to ask you to, do you wanna create a local file? And this throws people off a little bit because you're thinking to yourself, I don't wanna create an additional file, I wanna be working with the central file. That's incorrect. You need to have a local copy that is yours where you're changing your elements and then that syncs up and feeds into what is the central file. So you basically have a bunch of Revit files. Everyone on the team is has their own custom Revit file and then they're all syncing up to the central. Okay, so I'm going to go here, press open. This is the key point here. Automatically you have create a new local file. This, how the settings are here is what you want. Unless you're trying to create your own file that's not connected to the central file. In that case, you want to, you would want to type detach from central. That way, when you make say, you can do a save as, save it as a unique file type, and then you can just work on the file without screwing it up. I can save this. Uh, I'm just saving a local copy. It's a, it's a unique copy to your name, map to your name. And if you want to make those changes, upload them to the central file. You come here and do a synchronize, synchronize with central. Uh, the next point that's important is when you close the file, you do want to relinquish your work sets or relinquish anything that you own. So it's important that you don't move stuff around and then you don't sync to the central file and, but you save the project. So you think, oh yeah, I saved the project, that's fine. No, you need to make sure that you synchronize and so that you're relinquishing your work set so you're not holding on to a bunch of stuff so that when someone else tries to work on it, hey, they don't have that notification coming up saying, oh, that Mr. Bob owns all these elements. What the heck? I need access to them and now they're on a vacation if it's a BIM 360 model. So what does that actually mean? That means that instead of a model being hosted on your local server, your office's server, in this case, the Revit file is located on Revit's server farms that are probably backed up across the entire universe like 10 times. So the, in this case, your, your, your central file is hosted in what they're calling the cloud. You have to click here, and, and here's the catch with the BIM 360. You have to ask your BIM manager, hey, add me to invite me to the project. You open up your email, you accept the invite. When you have accepted the invite to a BIM 360 model, you will get the project information here and you'll be able to open up the file within this dialog. It's collaboration easier with uh, consultants and people can work on it wherever the heck they want, even if they don't have access to the office's server because, hey, guess what? It's using a cloud server. The next thing that we're going to talk about is visibility graphics. Visibility graphics are extremely complicated in Revit and also in every single BIM software, um, also ARCHICAD, which I've done lots of videos and we'll do some videos on visibility graphics in ARCHICAD as well. Visibility graphics have so many different locations of where those overrides can happen. It's hard to pinpoint where they are and it can be rather frustrating. But understanding visibility graphics in both Revit and ARCHICAD is essential to really understanding how the program works and where those items are being overridden. The first thing that you just need to make sure that you do not do is you cannot uh, uh, right click something and hide in view or override graphics in view. And this is because every single office has specific standards and if you have to go back and change a bunch of elements, that could be hours of work that you have to now change instead of a click of a button. I'm going to edit the visibility graphics of a floor plan. I would just go here and duplicate it and just give it a, t maybe just call it the same thing, uh, but then uh, give it sort of a temporary name that maybe you delete afterwards. 
after the project's done or something like that. But you don't want to mess up uh, these global standards because you don't know what that's going to affect in the entire project. Stability graphics. Within any model category, you have uh, different items that you can override or change within that model category. So what's interesting here is you can go to, let's say, doors, and you have all these different line types and weights. Um, these are things that are controlled. They're not necessarily controlled in the family, but they're lines that you bring in from a family into uh, a Revit project. This is why it's important that you don't just download a bunch of Revit families off of line, because then you're going to populate a bunch of different types of line weights uh, within your project. And you're kind of just adding in so much information. Uh, but if you did want to see sort of where these things start to get overridden, and, and how you can control these. And you can see here, this is where you would uh, change some of those uh, default line weights. Now, this is just the first layer of a lot of layers that come after that. So you could change something here uh, and it might not do anything. You'd be like, what the heck? Um, that's just part of learning. Okay, where is it being overridden? What sort of rules are being set? But sort of high level, these are the objects and these are all the line weights that are associated with them. Notation categories, uh, which are gonna be your tags, you can turn those off and on. What filters enables is you make all these rules uh, before and then you need to change something. Let's say uh, curtain wall is gray. This is where you sort of override some of those default items to be more specific. So let's say you have a certain type of wall that you want to show a certain way, you would create a unique rule. So let's just open up these rules real quick. And there are just tons of different rules. Let's say, oh, a door is 180 minutes. And now you can say, oh, that's going to show up as dash. There is a certain color. What you're trying to do is select those wall types. You're trying to select a specific item. Then once you've done that, you're saying all those things that I've told are going to show up in this specific manner. And that's where you override it right there. Pretty cool. Okay, so now we have work sets. Not gonna get into work sets, that's another day. Uh, and then uh, de design options, don't need to get that into a dip. Um, come into here, we, sh we see that we have visibility, we have these phase filters, and this is another area where it's going to say, override this or don't override this, graphics that they are overridden in. A lot of information with visibility graphics. Uh, we could probably go on for 10 minutes about visibility graphics. Uh, but we just don't have time. We need to keep moving. So what the heck are schedules? Here are schedules. Now, what's important to know is that you can't just change stuff. Yeah, you physically can change stuff within the schedule, but you have to understand that is actually changing the door itself. You change something within the schedule, you're changing it through the entire project. So if you have 100 doors and you change that door family or that door type, you are potentially changing every single door in your entire project. Kind of cool to hear is you can highlight a door in your model and find it in the model if you need to find something. Create a wall, I'm gonna go W, A, and I'm going to create a door. Uh, I actually just created a door opening. I'm gonna come here and I'm going to create a double door here. Okay, so what are families? Families are basically components that live within the project and you can import uh, as many as you want. They're, they're everything from, you know, you could consider a wall, a door. There are all these components that have all this information uh, built in and uh, you can always go ahead and edit that family unless it is a system family. So you have to understand the difference between uh, system families are ones that come with Revit. You cannot edit them. Uh, and then there's additional uh, types of families that you can edit. So, so the first thing to know about families is there are two different types of parameters. There are instance parameters and there are type parameters. The difference between those is if I click on a single door, instance parameters will show up on this right here and it will only change the attributes of that one door. Now, if I go edit type, edit type, and I change something, now I'm changing the type parameters. I'm going to be changing every single door that is 68 inches by 80 inches. So you wanna make sure that if you do change a type parameter, you know that I'm changing every single door in the project. If I'm going to go ahead and edit a type, sorry, an instance parameter, I'm only editing that door itself. 
if you want to change a type parameter and uh, what you can do is you can duplicate it and create an additional type to make sure that you don't mess up the original type. If you need to edit this family, you can come up here and go edit family. You can come up to properties and you will see uh, the different attributes. And if you want to create a parameter, a, a dimension, you can uh, click on that dimension and you can come up to here and you can create a family. And the, here we go. You have a type parameter and an instance parameter. And now you know what that is. Congratulations. A family is stored in a file. This is something that not a lot of people understand. And it took me a while to sort of wrap my head around. If I change a family within this project, it's not going to change every single family that's within that office in every single project. It's only changing it within that specific project. There's no reason to save families unless that's sort of how you're organizing and archiving specific family types. Families can live within the file and if you change them, you're only changing it for that project. You're not sort of going back and linking up to some other uh, family and you're messing up every single family for the entire project. You can do TL to do uh, what is going to be displayed when you print it. Okay, the last thing I want to get into is materials and then we'll be done. And it's really just to know that with every single material, there's specific information. And a lot of the times when it comes down to how it's cut or the graphics, uh, you can change information within that. Uh, now let's say I wanted to do two different materials here. I can come up to this paint tool and I can actually uh, paint the surface. Now, what's kind of cool about this is I can also go, so if I go to the Modify tab, I can also come in here and do a split face, and I can actually take this face and I can split it. Woohoo! And uh, then I can come in here and I can paint it a different color. Um, notice that I can't press Done. I need to press the color, hover over the material, and then press Click, and then press Done. Now when I select this material, when I select this wall, if I go to Edit Type, I go to edit structure, notice that those materials are not attached to that wall type family, all that kind of stuff. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, hopefully we got that under, under five minutes. I'm not exactly sure. We'll find out in the editing process, but please let me know your comments and what you would have wished you knew before uh, starting your job in Revit, things that you've learned. Uh, please let me know in the comments below uh, and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest videos that are coming out. And if you want to join the virtual uh, studio environment and Nate's studio desk is just one desk within that virtual studio and you get a seat at the table in that studio, that virtual studio, and can ask questions, uh, get tips, advice, all that good stuff. Uh, so please join uh, Nate's Studio Desk by subscribing. And I hope to see you soon uh, in the videos coming up. Have a good day.